All right, all right, everybody. Welcome to Wake Up Happy Sis. I'm your host, Leanne Dulce. And of course, I have my fabulous two almost co-hosts over here, the Nicole Johnson and Tony Sanchez. Um, today, we're going to be talking about the healing power of play. So therapeutic recreation and the ways that it can be used to support healing and growth. So we know that we all play a little bit in our lives, um, but for a lot of people, it is actually a form of therapy. It's actually used as a healing modality. Um, and therapeutic recreation offers a unique and powerful approach to improving overall health and wellness. It can help people overcome physical, mental, and emotional challenges. It fosters social connections and it helps their emotional well-being. So it just has the power to transform lives. So before we jump in, why don't you guys introduce yourselves? Nicole, you'd like to go first? Hey, y'all. Hey, I am the Nicole Johnson, founder and CEO of Girl Your Money Matters, affectionately known as The Gym, where we have all sorts of exercises to help you get financially fit. And thank you so much for having me today, Leanne. Hey. <laughs> Uh, and DJ Tony, you going to introduce yourself to the people? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm DJ Tony Sanchez, the T-Man from the Eye of the Storm, also broadcasting live at KCCR Radio every Saturday and Sunday night, 7 to 9 p.m., the Brownstone Worldwide, where we are changing the narrative, and I'm glad to be a part of it. Yes, yes. That's what we do every day. This is, this is what we do every day here. Oh, there goes Boss Lady down there. Hey, Paulette. Hey, girl. Oh. Hey, hey. So I want to start with a definition of just what therapeutic recreation is. I feel like a lot of people are like, what the hell is that? I don't even know what that is. But so. Therapeutic recreation, I'm reading from my notes, so don't judge me, y'all. Don't judge me. I ain't gonna judge you. <laughs> Therapeutic recreation is a treatment service that uses recreational and leisure activities to help individuals with physical, mental, or emotional challenges. The goal of therapeutic recreation is to improve a person's physical, emotional, cognitive, social, and spiritual functioning, enhance their well-being, and help them achieve their personal goals. It involves a wide range of activities such as art, music, dance, sports, and outdoor activities, which are carefully planned and adapted to meet the unique physical, um, the unique needs and abilities of each individual. So I, I, I said this because I want to make it very clear kind of what we're talking about. Now, none of us are, are therapists, recreational uh, therapists, right? But we know a little bit about play. We know about getting outside. We know about doing a lot of things that help ease our mental, emotional, and physical struggles. Um, I watched this guy on TikTok, and he works with disabled um, adults, right? And he takes them through different little strength exercises. Um, and these are people that normally would not, they're severely handicapped. So they're typically would not have that. And people then try to look at them as they're somehow, I don't know, less than because of their disability. And what I love about him is like, he has one guy, I can't remember the guy's name, but I love watching him because he makes him, uh, he's helping him uh, lift weights. Right. And so, just one time that man lift the weights, he'd be so hype. And I love to see it because he's helping improve his social functioning, his physical, his mental. And he knows that there's somebody there who actually gives a damn about him and his life and helping improve the quality of his life. So I just, I really love that. And I love the concept of therapeutic play. So when you guys are thinking about that, what types of activities do you guys think that like you guys have been involved in that just like you got out went hiking or something and how did it make you feel 
right? Coming out of that. Mm -hmm. So massage therapy is very therapeutic for me. Um, I carry my tension and my stress in my shoulders and in my neck and in my lower back. And it's giving me some physical problems right now. Okay. So in order to continue um, releasing that, I actually um, am seeing a chiropractor for that and having regular sessions with them. Um, but I also include massage, uh, a hot stone massage. Okay. The feeling, oh, listen, and I give specific instructions when I go to the, the massage therapist. Look, I need a nice, I'm, I'm very sensory. My son did that for me when I, when I, when the sense of smell is so high, I, it's almost animalistic to me. Okay. So I can smell people before they come. I, I can see, I can smell you before I see you. And that's like cologne, perfume, all of those things. So my sense of smell is, is up there. So I like sensory smells that will cause happy feelings, relaxing. Um, I'm very much into eucalyptus. I need something that's going to help me calm down. So when they do the hot stone massage, wherever they're focusing on, so if they're focusing on the lower back, they have to place a row of hot stones across the shoulder and down the spine while they work on that part. So then when they work to the spine, they have to replace the stones with another row on the lower back. So anything that they're not touching, I still need the heat therapy. Okay. So I'm very specific about how, you know, I got to go in there and tell them what I want, not what they think I should have. And when I tell you the sleep that I get while I get that massage, whoo, baby, that's a whole nother level of sleep. But when I come out of there, the amount of stress and tension that's been released out of those show, my shoulders and my neck, I feel like a brand new person. So it's something that I build in. I have a calendar right here that I'm working on. And as I'm scheduling my activities, I built in my massages. So that yeah, but like play. You gotta have to build in play though. The massage ain't play. That's it is for me. Play. See, that's, that, that's, 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 that's play. my play. That's my play. <laughs> and I also like to get I'm I'm a water person. So uh a sauna. Mm -hmm. Uh I like to go to the pool. I like to go to the beach. But I like to sit and relax in the water. I ain't out there trying to swim, all of that. I'm not trying to be no marathon swimmer, all of that. I can swim enough to save my life as long as you drop me in three feet of water. <laughs> but I'll you know, swim. What? You know what? I, you know what? I, I can't. I can't with you. But, I can't. but, but yeah, I can't. That's, that's good for me. Now, every so often, I like to get out on a nice day and walk, that kind of thing. But massage therapy is it for me. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. No, I love me a good massage. But one of the things that I love to do is, one, I got the little puppers. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I have a five-pound um, terrorist. My <laughs> five -pound is bully. not a terrorist. A pound, but we call him a five-pound bully named Ollie. Um, and he is very, he's a very active one-year-old uh, Yorkie. And when I say very active, he's very active. I'm surprised he you can't hear him now. He's probably getting his morning nap so that he can hype up for the afternoon. But we go out and we take walks. And he has the cutest little um, walk trot, like his little happy trot. He is in his happy place when he's walking. He's in his happy place when he's outside. When Now, when he was small, he hated outside. He was like, oh, I don't, I don't do grass and dust and you know but once he realized oh this is nice out here he's just a happy trotter so we go on our little walks around the neighborhood um and i also have learned that i like hiking a lightweight hiking not that i'm deep in the forest and there's a mountain lion over there and i got a back i'm not that but there are some nice trails no i'm telling you there are nice trails that you would like nicole you can do them they're very easy right and we'll go and we'll hike and then we'll go sit at a waterfall. And it's just so beautiful and therapeutic. Except for the one time I saw the snake 
in the water. Uh, See, that, it's that Lord, part right Lord, there. It's Lord, that Lord. part right there. See, I want to walk in the park, uh, not in nature. I, if I'm going to be in nature, I need to be inside the cabin looking out the window. Okay. Well, you ain't gonna worry me today. Lions, tigers, gonna... bears, and snakes, wing attack. I'm from the city. I'm from the city of Chicago. You saw the things you was calling animal control and staying inside. Oh, uh, mm. uh, uh, uh. we gonna we gonna look, Tony. Tell her we gonna have to get her outside in some yeah, nature. We got we got to get you out. We got you walk in Hyde Park, sir. When the last time you saw a snake crawling across the concrete? Hey, hey, to, to be uh specific and exact on that. I took a video of me walking down 53rd and High Park on Cornell and a snake, a guard snake was slithering right and I recorded it and I said, look at this here. Can y'all believe it? So, you know, we, we got all them kind of weird animals too, you know. Go out to the forest preserve and you will see some things that you be like. What was the first two words? Forest preserve. <laughs> right, right. No, I'm going to the concrete jungle. What, what Jay-Z said? <laughs> The concrete jungle. I'm gonna stay local in the concrete jungle. You ain't getting me out there in the forest trees. And all right, the all right, she going is to the dog park with Layla. That's okay. why you keep her. I, I have a 26 pound beagle, and she's such a big baby. And she used to do all of that one year old stuff, but she's seven now. She ain't got time for that. She she more like her mama now. We just gonna sit and look. Breathe in a little bit of I, air. I've been watching Layla. Layla's a little bit of a bully though to the other dogs. <laughs> she a little she likes to go out and uh command it's, it's, it's that animalistic part. nature of hers, but for the most part, she's quite reserved. Thank you very much. She's she's a cutie. Okay. <laughs> but, but having animals is a great way to include um therapeutic play in your life because it doesn't always have to be going outside being in nature right it could be that you are playing with layla right it could be that, that you're just so i want to get i want to get clear that like you said that therapeutic recreation is different for each person now me, I am gonna go out and do a little hike, and I say little. I'm not, I'm not doing no super hiking up mountains. Mine needs to be kind of flat ground, right? Cause I'm afraid of heights. Ooh, let me tell y'all this story. So my friend Adrian is a hiker. That's how I got started, right? So she'll take me on little lightweight things that she does, and we had to go down in the dirt to get to the um, waterfall. Baby, when I tell you I was crook, I was, you know how when you're a little kid, you coming down the stairs, you scoot on your butt? Cause I'm deathly afraid of heights and it was not like stairs to go down. It was like a dirt, a lead dirt trail that went down like this. And I was like, oh my God, I'm about to die. I would fall it up. But I made it. Okay, I conquered my fear, and I got down there, and the waterfall was just beautiful. And you're just sitting there, you're taking it in. Then I found out there was a walk down, a little further down, but you don't get to be as close to the waterfall if you wanted to be. And then I'm watching these other people; they coming down just off the side, you know, you know the with dogs. Look at that! Look at how you get that big ass dog down here. But that's what they do, you know, and they're used to it. And I loved it because it took me out of my comfort zone. It took me out of my element. But what I got was the tranquility. Because like you, I need water. I need water. It can be a pool. It can be a sauna. It can be a hot tub. It can be whatever. I need water, right? And just that tranquility helps calm my mind. It helps center me and ground me, you know. And just putting your feet in sometimes. Yeah. I'll say, I'll add to that, Leanne, that um, depending on our circumstances, sometimes we have to build in that play more often, right? If you are at a very high stress job, um, the weekend is not, you, sometimes, you, you're struggling to make it to the weekend, mm -hmm. okay? So you've got to find ways to build it in 
if but 15, 20, 30 minutes a day. So where my office building is located, I only go in once a week. Praise the Lord, saints, okay? Because that, that whole day. Hallelujah. <laughs> from the more, from, like, my day starts at 6.30 at home. But to be six thirty at the be at the office by six thirty, my day starts at about a quarter to quarter to five. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, that's a good hour and, a, and almost an hour and a half of good sleep that I'm losing out on. Right, so let's start with that. So there's a process to get to work and be there by six thirty. Mm -hmm. By 10, 30, 11 o'clock, I'm trying to decompress from the morning activity. And so we're the build the office building is downtown Dallas. There's a nice little seating area that I can make. I made a habit to get outside, to get some sunshine, to get away from the office and go and sit and just enjoy a nice breeze. Mm -hmm. um, I don't care if it's water, a, a bottle of lemonade, a cup of coffee, whatever it is, but that to break away from that space mm -hmm. really refreshes me to get me through my day. So, um, you know, being having some therapeutic play may be something you have to implement as best you can yes. on a daily basis. Take advantage of your surroundings. Even if you go out and read a book, listen mm -hmm. to a, look at, listen to a podcast <coughs> during the day. <laughs> Catch no. up. Play. Go listen. Oh, now, now, don't now. I'm from Chicago now. Now you know what stepping music is. Our it's our jam, baby. That's our jam. That's our jam. jam. So you got DJ Tony that you can always listen to because music is soothing. It's therapeutic. It is my my way that I I worship. Right. Uh, it is my way that I speak to the Lord. However, whatever you do. But music does all sorts of things for you. And so it's also your form of, uh, of exercise. So how about you're relaxing and exercising at the same mm -hmm. time in a two for one? So um, build those things in so that you can have something daily because it's important to me. It's important to my mental health. Yeah, it's important to my emotional health. So it doesn't have to be something that's scheduled out and, you know, got to be little things help too. And that's a good, a good point um, is that start small, right? Don't overwhelm yourself. And all of a sudden I, I need an hour and a half every day of play. Start small, right? It can be 10 minutes a day. It can be journaling. It can be mm -hmm. um, drawing. I'm a doodler. I love just doodle sessions where I'm, it's just, I'm letting my mind lead what is on the paper. I'm not thinking about it. I'm not judging it. I may be drawing stick figures. I may get uh, artful and feel like I'm gonna draw a person. It don't might not look like a person to you, but I know my intention, right? There are so many different forms of play, right? So, Tony. Yeah, so, DJ, what you get into? What, what, what kind of, what kind of uh, play kind of stuff do you do? You like to hike, you like to paint. We know you like your music. We know you over there DJing, getting it in. So, what do you like to do? Okay, first and foremost, let me touch on a couple of the things that y'all touched on that the people really need to realize and understand. What we actually are talking about is just a form of uh, enhancing your hobbies and creating habits, new habits for yourself. You know what I'm saying? Uh, for the habit part, everybody need to always realize you need some me time just for self. Right. Just for self, be it 15 minutes to an hour, man, plan that in the course of your day to where it's just your time, that's just my time, me time. For me, I learned this concept when I was going through, uh, through my recovery process and treatment, and we used to do occupational therapy. Now, in occupational therapy, we did a variety of things that just, you know, created, first of all, new social skills 
in me, you know, it, it opened up my mind to some new ideas and new things to get into that will occupy my time in a positive structure. You feel me? Yeah. In a positive structure, because now I'm replacing the negativity that I had in me with something else. Right. You feel me? So what I what 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 drew what what really drew me to occupational therapy was my fascination with ceramics. Mm. Ceramics, man, it took me to a place I had never been before in my life, and it was so soothing and comforting to me. To where I incorporated it in to my life, you know. Even now, to this day, I still go to some ceramic classes so I can sit in and make new, you know, vases and all that type of stuff. You know what I'm saying, man? And it gave me a new outlook, a new approach to first accepting the challenges within me that I placed them fears on. Cause you know, I, I I used to fear trying new things. Cause I ain't never been there before, you know. And I'm gonna keep it in the eye. For me, I always had a sense of failure in me. So until I conquered and faced that fear, I was destined to repeat it. You know what I'm saying? I was destined to repeat it. Now, once I learned how to face that fear, if I went back to it, then it was a choice. Cause I knew what not to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So with me, you know, I read, I do poetry, you know. Um, I'm an outside person, so I do a lot of walking. I do a lot of walking, man. And when y'all got to talking about trails, I walk trails here in Chicago, you know. I, I do. I really do. I walk trails in Chicago because one thing, yeah, one thing I learned about my city is I'm not going to never be no place where I'm scared to walk because I walk in the spirit of God. So I can go anywhere. I just got to be mindful of my surroundings and pay attention. <laughs> you dig what I'm saying? And pay attention. A lot of people get caught up because they're not paying attention to their surroundings. They get so caught up into, if, like you say, if, if you walk in the trail and you got on uh, headphones, you paying more attention to the music than you actually paying attention to your surroundings. Even though you may be walking, you're not paying attention. You know what I'm saying? So and it's a lot of... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's truly a skill. That's why I say people have to take time out out the day to practice this because you have to create a habit of doing things to, to, to better yourself, you know. And if it's just taking them 5, 15, 20 minutes just to say, you know what, I'm just going to sit over here in silence and just listen to this piece. Come on now, Tony. Come on. You know what I'm saying? And get in that's, tune that's, with that. that. Yeah, that's that's a hard thing to do to sh to sit in a place and shut out the world, shut out everything and everybody. But when I tell you it is so invigorating, come on now. It is. It is when you can when you can literally sit and enjoy the peace. Most people are not comfortable. This is what I found at least in talking with people that. I won't even say most, a lot of people are uncomfortable with themselves, mm -hmm. right? So the people that whenever there's a silence in their mind, it's awkward. So they're going to try to fill that silence with something, right? So it is a skill to sit, be still, mm -hmm. and learn how to quiet all the things that are going on in your mind, right? And that's what some of these other activities will help you do. So like pottery, because you have to be focused yes. on what you're doing. You make up one little thing, the whole thing cave in. Yep. Right? Uh, like art, like people who make these beautiful paintings. And I'm like, that looks real. Mm -hmm. Like, right, how do you, how you even do that? It looks real, right? Mm -hmm. And I love... The ability to learn new things. So, like, unlike you, Tony, I ain't scared to try something new unless mm. heights type thing. Yeah. Heights type thing. Like, I went zip lining. We were we were in Tulum, and we went and we rode the um, what do you call them? The little dune buggies, right? So we riding those, the four wheelers, and then we were gonna go zip lining. 
And in my naivete, my naivete, <laughs> I thought that when you go up and you do one, then you're done, right? Oh, no. So no. I'm saying, okay, I got my friends <laughs> talk me into it. It's okay, you can do it. Go hold your hand. First of all, you got to walk up the tower. The tower is creaky and it really don't feel stable. Okay? <laughs> that was the first thing. So I'm walking, holding on to the rail for dear life. Okay? Then I get up there and they're like, oh, you got to do three lines to get back to the. What do you mean? Three. Yeah, oh, I Lord. Up on one. Can somebody come pick me up after one? And bring <laughs> No, you got to do at least three. Each one was worse. Each one was worse. The first one, okay. I'm like, okay. I thought I was going to die, okay? But I got to the first one because they had a little handrail, but it looked like every one you went to, the deck you stand on to start got smaller. 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 (laughs) The third one didn't even have a handrail. So I literally, I couldn't walk up the stairs. The guy, the lady and one of the guys had to literally hold my hand and I thought I was going to plunge to my death. Oh, Lord. I can't. Okay, I thought I was going to plunge to my death because I was shaking so hard. But the feeling when you're on the zip line, Mm -hmm. when you're on the zip line is a totally free feeling. Like you're just floating. Floating. So right? your experience in zip lining is my was my experience when I went parasailing. Yes. So at the last minute, so first of all, the guide wanted to take me out to the beach and put a harness on me and had me sit in the sand. I was like, You crazy. He said, No, see, they're doing it. I said, But I'm not about to drag the Grand Canyon across this beach here in Cancun. <laughs> We need another location. Hey, Melissa. <laughs> hey, Melissa. Hey, I need Melissa. another way. To, um, Lord, help me. Jesus. I need some places. So he took us out. So he trained. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Let, me, let me say something to Melissa real quick. Because Melissa talking about she don't want to. Melissa, you do. You do. I know you mean I don't want to go zip lining, but I tell everybody. It is a once in a lifetime opportunity. You don't yes. have to do it again, right? <laughs> but because I won't, I did three. <laughs> That's like three times. That's three lifetimes. That's I it. You have, did it. But Melissa, you do want to do it. Yeah, the, yeah, you the got to. The feeling you. you get when you're on there, it is amazing. It is amazing, and you're looking, and you get the chance for those maybe sixty seconds or however long it takes to get to the other side because some zip line lengths are longer than others is the ability to enjoy what's there what god put this beautiful world that we live in that from a distance that you never get to see it's a whole different experience and you get to commune with yourself in that time I wasn't screaming. I wasn't, I was still scared, but it was so calming and restful till I got to the other one, had to walk up to the next one. Okay. You know, but but you can do it, Melissa. You can do it. Okay. Now back to the parasailing. So we went to the boat where they kind of wheel you up in a Mm -hmm. basket with this huge, um, umbrella type of setup and mm-hmm. my husband at the time decided he was too scared to get in the basket which worked perfectly for me so now i can sit in the center and ain't nobody but me and the lord right well, if you know anything about balance now this was me <laughs> this lady at the last minute Decided, can I go? I was like, hell no. <laughs> Not in this basket. In there. And when she got in the basket, it felt like this. This is how I felt with her. So it, it, this was the first mm-hmm. thing. I was like, man, so we, we're, they're, we're, they're literally doing this, turning us up in the air. 
and she starts doing this. Uh oh. Uh oh. No, 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 we can't no, no, we can't have no hyperventilation going on. So <laughs> I had to just literally tune her out. And I looked totally in the opposite direction to see the ocean, right? Now I'm 300 feet in the air. I'm not as high as an airplane, but I ain't as low as when I put my feet on the ground. That right. It's a totally different view. It's a totally different perspective. And when that bird flew in front of me, I was like, look at what the Lord has created. I was like, oh my God. And then again, I totally blocked her out. Mm -hmm. But it was a free experience. It was so peaceful. It was no sound up there. Right. Once you tuned her out. So would I do it again? The memory is ingrained in my blood vessels. Do you hear oh, me? Since your blood vessels don't never go away. It, the memory will never go away. But it was a beautiful experience. And it's one of those things. Once you do it once, you don't have to do it again. So Melissa, go ahead and try it in the right environment and just what you have now is what Leanne and I did not have is someone that gave us some advice in, in, in advance on how to prepare that's what having a good circle around you means so now when you do go you already know focus and tune things out and be ready for the experience Mm -hmm. Every now and then, when I really need to tune out, I know I can because I tuned that hyperventilated out and enjoyed the experience. But yeah. baby, don't ask me, I'll never do it again. And that's yeah. the most important thing is to enjoy the experience. So back to what you were saying, Tony, about people not paying attention to their surroundings. Mm -hmm. When you're hiking, are you just walking? Or are you paying attention to the nature that's around you, to the beauty of nature? See, when I go hiking, I don't carry no headphones, no phone, none of that. None of you that. Need I don't, phone, though, Tony, no, just no, in case. Put no, it in your bag in case something happened. No, no, no. What what I do is the phone is with me, but oh, it's but on. Not Yes. But it's on it's mute all. and silent. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's on silent because when I'm out in nature, that's the purpose of me being out in nature, to get in tune with my spirit man. See, my yeah. spirit man has to be fed. And the only way to deal with the spirit man for me is to be out in nature where all spirits run free. You know what I'm saying? All spirits are, are, are in nature. So I stay in tune. I listen to the sounds. I, li I, I, I stop sometime and just close my eyes and, and just tune in on the wind and just feel, you know, being in tune. That way I can find my centeredness. I have to get back centered, you know, mm -hmm. to deal with the, the fuss and the bustle and the noise of the city. Right? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? See, sometimes you have to take them breaks away from the noise of the city to get in a serene place in order to get yourself back in, in, in perfect balance and peace with self. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I do. You know what I'm saying? And then when I'm when I'm done, I have a new uh, rejuvenation about me on the inside, on the inside. Now, whatever that comes at me from the outside, my inside is prepared. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's prepared. Mm -hmm. So now I can deal with the, the frustration that I know I'm finna deal with, the disappointments I know I'm finna deal right. with. See, I didn't already went and ease my mind. I didn't get that out in the spirit. I didn't put it out there. See, I'm a firm believer in uh, continuing to speak those things that are not as though they were with the expectation that they shall and will come to pass. And pass the collection plate, right? You know what I'm saying? My, 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 father, my father told me to ask and I shall receive. He didn't put no stipulation on nothing what I asked for. You feel what I'm saying? So that's what I do. That's what I do. And it, it took me a while to get there, but it all starts with self. You got to make time for self. Sometimes it's not so much of the sound of the city. 
It could be the sound of the people around you. Around you, right. Environment. So you could be at home and need to literally disconnect because it's too much going on. You can be in the office and it's so much bouncing around and negativity mm -hmm. that you need to disconnect before you lose yourself. So having that ability to cut out, even if but for five or 10 minutes, so that you can reconnect because if you stay in the mess, you'll become a part of the mess. Mm. And that's what you don't want to do. You don't want to indulge the, the, the negativity around you. You don't want to engage in the negativity around you. So we must understand how to pull self out so that we can refresh, revitalize, refocus, and then come back into it. There you go, boo. Shit, tell them. Learn how to turn that 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 mess into a message. Mm -hmm. Yes, and and what's important is I really love what you said, Nicole, about not becoming a part of the madness that is around you, right? And there are a variety of ways that you can do that, right? One, like Nicole said, tune. You have to learn how to tune things people, situations out. Dial up your own inner fortitude because sometimes it's hard because those are your friends, those are your family, those are the people that you are closest to that are the messiest ones in your life. Amen. Wreaking Amen. the most havoc in your life. With my fan. With my fan. I need a, a fan. fan. <laughs> I need a fan. I need a fan. Hold right. on. Wait a minute. I need you to say it again for the people. There you go. Because I talk a lot about releasing people in love mm -hmm. because people do not get to stay in your space unless you choose. Well, let them stay there. You got to be throwing that rock at me like that. Mm, I got, well, I got the message. I got, got the message. I got Is you me. listening though? <laughs> let, let, let me do a confession. Uh oh. Let me do a confession. Like he he's had, he's had, my confession. Let me do a confession. Okay. All right, Usher. All right. Right. Usher Sanchez. <laughs> <laughs> Leanne and um, Paulette both know I have a I have a scenario that I had to release and love. Right. And it's the hardest thing for me. It has been the hardest thing for me to do. And I've gone way above and beyond my fed up level. Like I'm only five three, and my fed up level is probably ten feet tall. So I'm taking double what I, I'm holding double what I can't, what I'm supposed to handle. Right? right. He only put me five feet three and a half on a good day. Don't get on a good day. Out. Don't leave my half out. Okay. I need all my half right, right. Out. So Is that with heels or without? I'm just saying, um, I'm just saying. Now, now, I don't do a heel, but I do a, a damn good wedge, and I can get okay. up five, six on the Okay, wedge. now we talking, baby. Don't Come play, on. Don't boy. play. I, I listen. I bring the noise then. <laughs> I tell but, you nothing. Um, it's so intertwined mm -hmm. in me that I had to text the release. But when and when me. they called and said, tell me you're releasing me i couldn't so this morning just this morning i did call oh. and i did say it i couldn't say it last night but i did say it this morning and I, st <laughs> I still sit now with the thought of am i doing the right thing but i've been doing it this way and i'm not even gonna tell y'all the number of years it's not necessary we're not even gonna go into that but i let's just say it's been double digit years okay so it's double digit years so the width the length the height all of it is above me it's all above me. Mm -hmm. And so something that was said to me is that whatever, whenever you are trying to make a decision, if you ask him, 
and you believe that he's going to do what's best for you, best for me, then that means leave it to him. So whether this thing comes back to me or not, it's got to come back to me the way God sends it back. Because doing my own strength yeah. has been wrong. So yeah. some of the people that are closest to you, family, good friends, partners, spouses, kids, sure is the hardest thing for you to let go. But when you trust him, no matter who or what it is, whatever he has destined for you, his word and his plan will come to life. Amen. Now, Amen. Let me do a little bit of station identification. In case you are just now tuning in, you are listening and watching Wake Up Happy Sis, the show on KCCR The Brownstone, where we are changing the narrative for black and brown people because we're telling our stories what? Our way. So I want to bring it back around to the concept of uh, the power and the healing power of play. And especially when you're looking at toxic relationships, narcissistic relationships, um, all that drama, stress, and things that are going on in your life, having an outlet for your stress, for your emotional um, issues, for your physical challenges is necessary. Self-care and wellness is no longer an option. It's no longer, it cannot be seen as a privilege for those who can. It is a necessity, especially if you are a high achieving, high performing woman, right? Because you got the world on your shoulders. As black women, we're supposed to be the strong ones. We're supposed to always only be the happy ones because we can't be seen as, you know, the angry black woman. We're supposed to be superwoman, wonder woman, a bat girl, pick a pick one, cat woman. Mm-hmm. We're supposed to be all things. Uh-uh, uh-huh. the Proverbs 31 woman. There you go. We need ways that we need creative outlets that help us get the stress out, but also are ways that they can help us heal. Yeah. Right. If you've ever done a sip and paint event, I went to one where it had a whole nude model, baby. Yes. Lord Jesus. That was my friend. It was my friend, Justin. He is a he is a chef and he's a model and he ain't had no problem. Okay. But those kind of things where or they have here in Atlanta, they have so many different events that you can choose from. They I don't know if they do the play dates anymore, but there was an organization, a black company that used to coordinate adult play dates. And it was an event where they would have different games, different activities. Right. They had the music, the DJ. They had all these little game areas set up. They had group games where the host would be doing games and stuff as well. It was such a good time because you could come there by yourself, feel like you're more in a clubby type environment. But all of these things are helping you relieve the stress of the day that you just left behind and the day you got coming up. Right. Right. There's art as is a wonderful way, right? Like I said, sip and paint. Um, they have, I was just watching TikTok. There's a um, a lady here in Atlanta who does charcuterie classes. Like they teach you how to cut the your fruit and stuff into the cutesy little shapes and you can get a custom charcuterie board and they Help you get to pick a flower. They teach you how to arrange flowers. You get to take the arrangement with you, right? These are things that you can do by yourself. These are things that you can do with your good girlfriends, with your mate, 
Put that on our list, ma'am. Oh, it's, you already know it's on the list. It's on the list, baby, already. So I, I am a big, I'm a big kid at heart. I love to do fun and engaging things with my friends, but also by myself. Right. I will go out, I will vacation, I will trip by myself because these things are necessary for us to replenish ourselves. Nobody can do it for you. I ain't trying to get on the soapbox today, but I will <laughs> step down when I need to. Self-care is important. And I appreciate being a part of your community. Uh, wake up happy sis. Um, if you guys haven't seen, she's going to have some beautiful pictures coming up where she is waking up happy and old Ollie over there is waking up happy pup. So it's running in the family. Oh, <laughs> <at all times. laughs> and we've got some wonderful yeah. events coming up as well, right? Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about what each of us does as we kind of think about uh, getting ready to wrap this up. What is one kind of play that you would like to do that's on your bucket list, something you have not done before that you would like to do within the next six to 12 months? So on my bucket list. Wait, and why? Oh, um, so I have two things um, and they're both, uh, travel related uh, so it's the destination uh, mainly one because it's always something I've wanted to do um, hi Patricia glad to have hi, you Patricia. Um, they're on my bucket list so kind of more of a 12 to 18 months um, one is a two week trip to Greece to visit the ruins of in, in Athens and just to see the historical part of uh, of history, whether it's my history or somebody else's, but uh, at least five to seven days in Santorini for the relaxation, the beautiful blue waters, um, and the whole photo shoot with the flowy dress. Yes, yes, on my bucket list. Mm -hmm. And then um, recently I discovered how much I would love to go to Egypt. I want to visit um, the places where the, the pyramids were built. You know, that's the Delta. We always talk about pyramids, but um, they're, they're not actually connected. But yes, I do want to go to Egypt in, in particular. I want to go back to uh, the parts of the, of the world where Jesus actually walked. That is so much ingrained in me that it has to be done. But six months, I want to do the train ride uh, through Canada with a glass top. I love to see outdoors, whether I'm in it or not. More, I prefer to be able to be inside and look. But the uh, part of the train ride goes through um, the mountains, and there's a, a big... Uh, uh, body of water where you can go out and the train stops. You can get out. You go out and sit, and it's got good food. I'm a foodie, and I love trying foods on somebody else's dime. So since it's all included with the trip, so those are my three things. So I'm a travel uh, nut, and I'm ready now that you know we're getting a little bit more open in the world to get out and explore. What about you, Tony? Wow, man. Uh, boss lady, she put it right on the head for me. You know, uh, my bucket list uh, venture has always been to go to Africa. I, I, I want to actually go to the actual place where the slaves were took from, you know, t in mm -hmm. order to get an understanding of where my blackness or really originated from. And, 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 and to get into the root of it all yeah you know what i'm saying i i, I want to i, I want to know what it felt like to actually be free before we became captive mm. you know what i'm saying and Tony, the only way for Tony is deep. Tony Tony is deep. Tony hitting with the deepness like that 
No. no, you know, I mean, I mean, that's just for me. That was something personal in me because, like, like I say, with me not knowing and never meeting my father, there's an emptiness there. There's an incompleteness there. And with me, as far as my blackness, how it all came about, I know it, it originated from the motherland. You know what I'm saying? So I have to go to the root in order to get an awareness of where I came from and what I am. Before I became a captive, you know what I'm saying? So that's my bucket list thing that I really want to get in tune with because, like I say, it's, it's, it's a couple of missing pieces in me. And one, I know I'll never be able to replace or refill, but I can get some peace and a little understanding and closure for self. So I won't be, you know, holding me back. Because at one point in time, I used to always think it was because of me. But I don't really know what he was going through. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that that's for me, man. My bucket list is to go to Africa so I can get a sense of where I came from originally, you know. Now, let me, let me tell you this. I've been to Ghana, where the slave ships were. I've been to the castles. Um... It is a very emotional and intense feeling when you go there because you can feel the souls. They are still there, right? It was very emotional. They do, there's two, there's Elmina and Eleuthera, I think. No, there's Elmina is one of them, but we went to two different ones. And they one of them, they did like a reenactment right and you got to go into the um you get to walk through the castles and you could see like they had wherever the women's quarters were their little rooms they had trap doors in the ceiling because that's where the masters were coming to get the girls and raping the women right they right. You could see these spaces in these rooms and they put you in there and when one room was all women, one room was all men, and they had like an ancestors ceremony. When I tell you, the spirits were there in that room, right? And it wasn't a sad feeling. It was a very comforting feeling, right? So I would definitely say that anybody any black person. I don't mm -hmm. care whether you think you came from Africa or not, because baby, we all did. That is the originator. That is the mother ship, if yes. you will. So yes. I'm not even here for all those other people that want to have that argument. We're not going to have that argument. You need to go. You need to experience it. And you get to see that the view of Africans that we think they have of us is not real. They were so welcoming and inviting of our group of people. We got to meet an Ashanti King. We got to go to a village school where they had a queen mother, right? Their views and perceptions of us really aren't what we think they are and what's been pushed to us, right? So I would encourage everybody to take a trip like that. Go back and find your heritage. I saw a man who looked just like my uncle, like could have been his twin. Right. So we need to have those experiences. And I've been to Greece. We went and walked and we walked through the ruins. I ain't did the flowy dress thing yet, but that is on my bucket list. So for me, places that I want to go, Egypt is definitely the top. And so Paulette says she's going and shout out to urban intellectuals that just did a tour to Africa. They're still yeah. there. Yeah, They're they haven't come back yet. Yeah. They so, reached Ghana on Monday. Ghana. So, they, so shout out to Urban Intellectuals. You know, they've been sending up the beautiful pictures and all that and their experiences. So find a group that can take you on a tour of where you want to go. Egypt is definitely on my um, bucket list because I want to go and to be in the pyramids. Because regardless of what you say, those black people that built those. 
without tell, all the tools, tell the truth, without all the technology, and their shit is so precise. That it's is more precise than some, than some calibrated major. Right? Mm-hmm. Think about it. Their, their things are so precise that some tools can't even calibrate that preciseness. And they doing this stuff with chisels. So don't tell us that we are not the shit, that we are not the originators of big, hairy, scary, audacious technology inventions. We invented math and science that came out of Egypt and out of Africa, right? So we need to do those things, have those experiences and not be afraid to go out and see the world and experience other cultures. But for me, if I were to think of another thing that I want to do that is on my bucket list of experiences is, I don't know, I'm trying to think of something that's not travel because mine is always generally centered around travel and food. <laughs> that's my things is, is centered around travel and food. I would like to go to make sure I've hit um, every continent outside of Iceland. We're not doing that, but I would like to hit all the other continents and be able to say I've had an authentic experience in that space, right? Um, I think that's probably the best for my bucket list because those things help my mental. Traveling and getting other people's experiences has always been a calming, centering, leveling thing for me. So uh, Paulette gonna get us out there. Uh, She said, uh, shout out to Freddie Taylor and Crystal Taylor for their videos and content because we are living vicariously through y'all, through your videos and through your pictures. So keep them coming. Um, and as we wrap up, because you know, it's already 1057, y'all. Time has flew by. So, Nicole, tell the wonderful audience here how they can listen to Girl Your Money Matters and how they can get involved and engage with more things that you have going on. So I want to tie in the last part of what you said um, about your bucket list it directly into what we're what's coming up on Girl Your Money Matters. Being able to travel the world like that, hit all the continents, um, a lot of that is what you see Freddie and Crystal Taylor doing because they manage, they, they as entrepreneurs, they're doing better money management, better budgeting so that they can live the life that they want to do. And that is what we teach, practice, uh, preach, and all the things over there at Girl Your Money Matters, which airs tonight on KCCR and the Brownstone Worldwide and Girl Your Money Matters YouTube live streams. Uh, right here at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. So wherever you got, however you got here, you come on back. You come on back tonight. You are right where you belong. Thank you, Tony. Um, And so that is uh, what we're doing. And we're starting to spotlight entrepreneurs. I got uh, Josh, the Automation King, is coming on tonight. But the month of March is Women's Month. And I am so excited to be able to highlight full-time entrepreneurs who are six-figure owners and more because I ain't getting into all of their financial business, but I want, we're going to talk about how better budgeting and money management helps them live the life that they want to live. Crystal and Freddie can pick up and go to Africa with or without a tour. Okay. Some of you want to be able to make sure you're debt-free. Some of you want to make sure you can fire your boss. We're going to talk about all those things. And I want you to hear from people who are doing it to give you some aspiration so that you too can do it as well. Okay. So thank you so much for having me as a guest today, Leanne. As always, my sister, I love you. I love spending time with you, DJ Tony. And thank you to Paulette uh, for the uh, opportunity to have this platform to be able to change the narrative for our black and brown community. Because in 40, 50, 60 years, if the narrative is still being told wrong, it's our fault. Our fault. Not theirs. Agree. And what about you, Tony? Tell people how they can get engaged with you. 
Okay, okay. Once again, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. Man, I am thrilled and honored, man. This is fantastic, man. Great stuff today. Great stuff today. Uh, you can catch me, the T-Man, at KCCR Radio, you know, every Saturday and Sunday, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, at the Brownstone Worldwide, where we are changing the narrative. And I want to say to each and every one of you out there that's listening today, follow your heart. Live your life and pursue your dreams because we all we got. Amen, 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 amen. And for me, um, I'm here Monday through Friday. You can watch the replays, 10 a.m. Eastern, Wake Up Happy Sis show. And you can also find me on any social media at Dolce and Lay. Um, that is the parent company. So I'm everywhere. I'm on TikTok. I'm on Facebook, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm, I'm everywhere, right? So just hit me up, right? And if you would like to be a guest on the show, hit that bit.ly link down there in the scroller. And we've got a lot of great topics coming up. We talk all things self-care and wellness here. And that means we can talk about anything, right? Because everything is self-care and wellness in my book, baby. It all matters. So I want to thank y'all for coming, for sharing with us today. Make sure you tune back in at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central for Girl, Your Money Matters. You heard. You heard. You got to be here. You don't want to miss out. Don't so, want to miss out. <laughs> thank y'all for coming. God bless and good night. Love y'all. Bye.